Oh my God, it's been longer than a long hot minute. It's been months now and I'm so happy to finally tune in with y'all and, and get back into the flow of recording and whatnot and, and pulling out these cards for you. Hello, hello, hello. Um, this is Tatiana Tarot and we're going to continue with our Tarot Energy Forecast. Um, I, I made an announcement a couple of days ago. My mind is all over the place. So I don't even know what day it was. It wasn't too long ago at all. It must've been a, a day or two, but, um, I've been away because I've been creating a baby. I got a baby bump here. I'm here in my bed, just marinating and, um, planning for this big and unexpected change that's been happening since the beginning of January. So, the first trimester, I'm now out of the first trimester. I'm in the second trimester, um, thank goddess. And the first trimester was just every symptom imaginable that I can possibly have during a pregnancy I had. So there was just like no me seeing the lights anytime soon. I was like puking everywhere. I was nauseous. I was exhausted. I was moody. I had a lot of mood swings. I wasn't even interested in the world of tarot. I didn't care about my work. I didn't care about my business. Um, I had to have my partner help me out along the way because it was just very overwhelming for me to give of my energy and I needed a lot of time to just kind of create a child, you know? And now that I'm in my second trimester, I have all my energy back. I'm excited to reconnect with y'all. Thank you so much for all the love and the blessings y'all been sending to me. Um, I greatly, we greatly appreciated me and Jay. He's out doing business. But um, it's me and baby Simba. I have a new cat, Simba Boo Boo Child. And he's well behaved. He don't leave mama's side. So he's really spoiled too. But he's going to be joining us. And so it's been a lot of changes. A lot of positive, amazing things happening. Now I've been in New Orleans. But what better time than now to start with the tarot, tarot energy forecast. So if you guys are new, um, I would say welcome. I generally utilize the tarot. And oracle cards, I do a reading weekly, or I did, now I'm going to start doing them again. And I just read the energy and, and tell you what you can expect, um, discoveries and, and anything that should be brought to your awareness during the week in terms of your subconscious and your conscious minds. And I pull out a card for every two days of the week, um, one card for every two days, so I'll be pulling out a card for Monday and Tuesday, pulling out a card for Wednesday and Thursday, and pulling out one card for the weekend, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And then, um, actually, aside from one card, I do pull out one conscious card and one subconscious card. So theoretically, there are two cards that we are going to be following along for two days. Uh, uh, still on pregnancy brain. And then one oracle card to summarize what the full week has in store for us. Um, Today, I'm using the Rider Weight is your standard tarot deck. Um, you can find the illustrations in a lot, a lot of books. Um, the Rider Weight is, the, I guess, one of the most popular tarot cards out there. And so if anybody's looking to get into tarot reading, I mean, there's just so many tarot cards. And I always tell people to go with your own vibe. But if you are picky and you're not really having fun with the shopping experience like me, one deck that you can rely on that's really awesome and you're trying to learn and any book that you pick up pretty much uses this illustration as its example, that would be the right of way. So I have a huge deck that just came in the mail from Brooklyn Tarot. Um, you can follow him on Instagram. I don't re necessarily recall where he's at in Brooklyn for sure, but he's a really dope dude by the name of Jeff and he was selling some cards and I bought this because I don't have a huge deck and I thought it would be perfect to kind of segue into these videos again and use them in the videos. In addition to that, um, my sister girlfriend sent me this moon deck, moon oracle deck in the mail and it comes with this dope box. You can probably find it on Amazon. She lives in Brooklyn. I think she got it in the store in Brooklyn. But it's literally called the moon deck and it's a guidebook. And it's, it's 
really, really dope because it has these beautiful illustrations um, such as this. And they're really simplistic. They don't necessarily go about any tradition. Whereas the tarot, you know, you have suits and cups, I mean, suits and um, archetypes and whatnot. And that could be a little frustrating or overwhelming to learn if you're starting out. So this is a, a simple way to get direct guidance by just pulling a card and it's self-explanatory. It'll tell you a phrase at the bottom and the page number that you can find the definition for it in the booklet. Right. And then rituals you can do with that. So I advise you to pick that up, too, if you're looking for something quick and um, something that will resonate with you and your intuition. Another Oracle deck that we'll be using today. I wanted to use two because it has been a hot minute. And so I know a lot of you have been sending me a lot of emails and messages about where the hell are you? Where did you go? Um, I'm a hermit. So when I disappear, I really disappear. <laughs> Um, so that's what I've been doing in the meantime. So I wanted to use two Oracle decks to compensate for lost time. I'll be using the Isis Oracle deck. This is one of my favorite and it's one of the most profound Oracle decks that I have ever accessed. It's really in depth. It goes like, you know, there's like three pages of, of, of definition of the cards and including uh, a ritual and an incantation. So I'll go into that. But, um, so let me just stop chatting and just get into the week. Let me figure out what week I'm doing, first of all, because I really, like, pregnancy really does fuck with your brain. Um, so we're doing the week of May 22nd, from Monday, May 22nd, all the way to Sunday, May 28th. Okay? So... I want everybody to tune in. You're more than welcome. If this is your first time watching, you're more than welcome to whip out a pen and paper. Um, there's a lot of information that I'll be speaking of. Some of it may resonate with you now. Some may resonate with you later. Some of it, um, some of it may not resonate at all. And so sometimes you just need to hear this information so that when you encounter someone in the near future, it's like, oh, I overheard that in the video. And maybe that's the right thing that this person needs to hear at this time and I'm just being the vessel and delivering that message so just bear that in mind keep an open mind keep an open heart um nothing is should be taken at face value nothing is 100% concrete you always have the power to change you have free will so I incorporate that in my readings it's not like do or die situation so you come in with a light heart and you are going to be receiving a lot so yes whip out that pen and paper if you have it handy and the next step I want you guys to do is to take a couple of deep breaths and relax and just kind of let go of anything that's in your mind and just focus on what's happening in the present moment through this video and focus on your breathing and focus on your internal state of being how do you feel how do your fingers feel how do your toes feel and center your focus in the middle of your heart, your heart space here, where your more expanded sense of awareness lies. And throughout the reading, just kind of keep your awareness and your attention there. Um, and, and don't discredit and, and don't discredit or in, invalidate any experiences that go on in your background because that is still part of your matrix that's still part of your personal experience and it's happening for a reason whether that be a dog barking in the background you get interrupted suddenly you got to pause the video um you lose your train of thought you need to go backwards it is okay you are to be compassionate and understanding and just allow things to happen organically as they fall during the session so i am going to be utilizing this first again we're, we're talking about may 22nd right Yes. So I want everybody to, if you have a personal belief system or something you want to channel, bring forth your higher self, your ancestors, your spirit guides, your reaches, the lowest, what have you. I'm going to have you guys focus on the deck as I shuffle the cards and focus your attention. And through the screen, you can project your energy for the highest good of all involved. Just visualize the cards picking up on your energy and any information you most need to know for this week for your best benefit. 
and don't mind me I'm just gonna say a quick prayer that I normally start with in the beginning of all my sessions for the highest good of all involved spirit I ask that you access my higher self my spirit guides my ancestors my Orishas my lowest light being entities um, ascended masters and archangels and again any light being entity that can best serve and guide us here today Spirit, I ask that you come out um, for our best benefit. May you lead and provide us with clarity, guidance, and valuable information that will illuminate our personal paths, strengthen our personal developments, support our emotional developments, and spiritual developments as well. I thank you for your wisdom and your guidance and your protection. I also thank you for allowing me to be the vessel here today. Ache. Okay, my guy. Guys. My guys. My guides. Okay, Spirit. What information do we all need to know for Monday the 22nd and Tuesday the 23rd on the conscious note? What, what information is going to be made known to us consciously? Right? What is what's gonna be obvious to the eye that's important for us? Okay. Okay. And subconsciously, what do we not know that needs to be brought to the light on Monday the twenty second and Tuesday the twenty third? Again, these messages may not just pertain to the day, it may pertain to the week, it may pertain to the month as well. That's why you want to jot it down and just kind of reference it from time to time to see how it resonates with you. Subconscious Monday and Tuesday. Okay. Cool. We're getting an interesting message here. So I'm going to show you on a conscious note what you should be kind of aware of or maybe things that you already know you're not necessarily taking action on. That's manifesting for Tuesday, excuse me, Monday and Tuesday. It's manifesting as the Nine of Wands. Um, wow, I love how freaking huge these shits are. They're crazy. That's good because you can see everything in detail. So let's break this down real quick. I try not to make this a long, long video, but who sabe, I just chat on for days. So the Nine of Wands shows this character here. He's been in battle and he's been kind of beaten up by life. Or beaten up by the situations that he get goes into. You know, he has experience. But now, you know, over time, he's built up some sort of a boundary, uh, a, a border that's protecting him from, you know, the world around him. He's a little skeptical. He sees a little paranoid. He's like, I don't necessarily know what's going to lurk around the corner. I don't know if I should be moving forward. I don't know if I should stay where I'm at. I can't necessarily trust my instincts. I've fallen so many times that I don't even trust myself anymore. Or I'm going into unknown territory and I'm so scared about that that I can't necessarily wear a cape of empowerment or courage. Um, I'm just being a little paranoid right now and I'm kind of freaking out. So there's a sense of anxiety. There's a sense of worry. There's a sense of apprehension. This card does talk a lot about apprehension. Again, because it's coming into the conscious realm, this is stuff that you might already know about. Now, we don't necessarily know, or I don't necessarily know what this card pertains to in your life. It could be pertaining to your career, your family, your love life, things that you're thinking about yourself, making this next move, this next chapter in your life, or all of the above. This is for you to resonate with and for you to kind of focus and meditate on. Again, if you don't necessarily know how it's applying to you, just keep an eye open, just keep a heart open, and also check in with your heart and just ask yourself, you know, where can I, you know, fit this whole theme in and, and trust your first gut, your first instinct, what's popping up for you. The Nine of Swords, uh, excuse me, I'm, ooh, Nine of Swords is a card of anxiety. And when I do a Freudian slip like that, I don't think it's a mistake. So y'all want to jot down the Nine of Swords and look up the meaning for that because that might tie in with this. As a matter of fact, I'm going to look for the Nine of Swords because I don't do that mistake often. And I do feel like it's spirit telling me to tell you guys about something that's going on with your mind. Your mind is playing tricks on you. 
or you may have a lot of thoughts going on at once, a lot of decisions to be made, a lot of calculations that are going on that are just weighing very heavily on you and you're hesitating your next move. You may already know what you need to do, but you're afraid to do it because there are no guarantees that it's going to fall in your favor or it's such a radical move for you that you don't know if you can land on your feet the way you want to or you, you, you're not even trusting if this is the right decision for you. So what slipped out of my mouth was the Nine of Swords. And you can see that this is also, it integrates with that theme in the sense that there's some sort of worry and anxiety. This person can't sleep. He's just thinking, thinking, thinking. When we're, we're talking about the Swords, we're talking about the mental realm. What lies in your brain? What formulates up here? The amount of clarity that you have, um, the way you articulate things, the way you 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 perceive the world around you. So there can be a lot on the brain that you're piling up, or these can be stories that are not necessarily real. They're not valid. They're illusions in the brain. It's time for you to kind of get some rest. It's time for you not to focus on all of this at once. Get some rest. Or sometimes you just have to allow things to play, play out organically. Sometimes there's nothing that you can possibly do. So there's no point in you freaking out about something there's there's um that's not in your control alternatively it could be the exact opposite it could be that you've been consciously thinking about something over and over and over again something that you have to take action on something that you've been dreading on because you're fearing the worst and you're holding yourself back not allowing yourself to be vulnerable and falling into the void and falling into the abyss and taking one step at a time but essentially trying to hold motion trying to halt um your destiny and and your progress because you know there's that anxiety of what if i get beaten up again another interpretation for this card could be that amidst all that among amongst all that excuse me all that fear and anxiety and you knowing that you need to do it and you're not entirely doing it there's an aspect of yourself that is actually ready to go to war there's an aspect of yourself and not war like ah i'm ready to defend what i need to do i'm ready to take action on what i need to do to become the person that i know i can evolve into the person that i know i truly am and you know what it, it even though it's scary even though it's fearful I think I just need to own it for the beginning of the week and just take a leap of faith and just go there and do it. Okay? So that's what's going on on the conscious realm. Now, subconsciously from Monday and Tuesday, the 22nd and the 23rd, we're getting the King of Pentacles. So this is really funny because the King of Pentacles, uh, the King of Pentacles is obviously, he bought about it, all right? He got that dough. He got that golden coin. He's got this luxury all around him, this wealth, this abundance, um, flourishing crops. You know, he's wearing this garment that's decorated with grapes and um, affluence and, and stability and, and this castle behind him. So he's, he's rich. He's wealthy. Interiorly, um, you may truly believe that things are going to transpire in your favor. The King of Pentacles is someone who is stable, who's very dependable, who's very uh, um, accountable for his actions, very responsible. He's a person that can be very stubborn to change. But if you were to take this change, you know you'd be okay. You'd land on your feet. And this may actually be, this change may be involving some sort of foundation. Um, you know, building, rebuilding your roots somewhere. You know, reestablishing something for yourself. You know, starting from scratch. King of Pentacles did not achieve that sort of status overnight. It does take some sort of consistency in his actions. Consistency is the key here inside of you. You have to be consistent. So what have you kind of been fearing? Um, what have you been fearing? What sort of action have you been fearing that's inconsistent? And what actions do you need to take now that support your self-care, that support your growth, that support your, your sense of wealth and success for you? Um, King of Pentacles can also represent it's time to build and it's time to just be on that grind of building for yourself. So what do you want to build for yourself? A new lifestyle, a new home, um, a new career, um, a new mindset that's supportive, a new love, 
Um, so, so the King of Pentacles also is a very nurturing individual. Okay, we're talking about the element of earth. When we're talking about Pentacles, we're talking about the ground, what's stable, what's on earth, the fruits of your labor, the fruits of your time and your energy. So, what do you physically have to do to reproduce these results? There's something inside of you that's going to be secure regardless of what you do. It's just taking the action in the present tense that's freaking you out. Right. So ultimately, this looks like it's going to be an extremely positive change. And it's a positive change that's really anchoring you in to this new transition. That's like well, this is in your best benefit. And this is what you're going to be rocking with for some time. King of Pentacles is wise, but he's also very practical and grounded. You want to be down to earth when you're making this decision. Don't just be over emotional and don't just be over logical and then discredit your emotions. Just, just, just be grounded in the sense that you are secure with your moves. You know things are going to, you know, you've seen every possible outcome. You're prepared for anything unexpected or you're not allowing yourself to kind of be blindsided by different possibilities that can pop out. Um, King of Pentacles can also mean wealth. You know, you are very wealthy inside. Your spirit is very wealthy and humble and abundant. So knowing who you are plays a great role in the choices and, and decisions that you make. And if you're comforted by the fact that you know, you know where you stand and you're standing a ground and you're, you're really, truly fighting for your best benefit and your best interest. Then you got to do what you got to do. Sometimes it's hard for us to make a decision. Sometimes it's a very hard course of action we need to take that's for our best benefit. But when your ass is on the line and it's about you and your well-being, you got to do it. You got, you're the only person that's defending you. This is your life. You got to you know, take a stand for it. And so this is going to be extremely rewarding for you in the subconscious realm. Extremely rewarding because what we believe in our subconscious realm transpires in the conscious realm. So let's see. Conyeso. I was talking a lot. Excuse me. For Wednesday and Thursday, the 24th and the 25th. Consciously, what is it that we need to know? Wednesday and Thursday, 24th and 25th, in our conscious minds. What do we need to know and learn about spirit that we are already aware? It's already in our minds that we may have not been taking action on. What's popping out for us, spirit? Okay, subconscious realm for the 24th and 25th. What do we not know? What do we not know that needs to be brought to the surface? Okay. Okay, so what is conscious for us for Wednesday and Thursday, 24th and 25th? We're getting the seven of pentacles. We're getting a lot of pentacles here. Okay, so prepare yourself for work. Okay, good work. I got to take action and make something happen and make that vision real. But also prepare yourself to reap the rewards for that which you've been speaking of or trying to bring into existence. Um, the seven of pentacles is a card of growth. It's also a card of patience. You see this farmer here and he is like just staring at his crops in anticipation. Did I put enough water? Does it have the adequate soil and fertilizer? Is it in the right environment to grow? Does it have enough sunlight? Also, he might be, you know, he's consistent. There's a consistency here. It's in the ground. You know, it's, 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 it's centered it's not going anywhere and so he's you know he's he's looking at his babies essentially and what he's been trying to grow over time whether these are individual projects where this is this is a belief system whether this is a habit and you have it you've implemented whether this is self growth you know it it, it it tells you that Rome wasn't made in a day essentially you know and, and you got to focus on the time in which you're preparing things and the time in which you're planting seeds because these seeds cannot grow overnight you know you don't plant something in the winter and something starts blooming in the winter like it just doesn't happen you got to wait into the summer or whenever that plant can you know fully be a plant whatever the word for that is, you know, it just takes time. It takes time for things to marinate. So this is a big card of, of patience, but this is also a card of consistency. 
consistency pays off. Again, day in and day out, doing the nine to five on what brings some passion, what brings some pleasure, and you're starting to see the results. So on a conscious note, you may be in the middle of the week receiving information on what you're seeing the results, or maybe um, you're seeing the results of what you've been planting, what you've been working on for some time now, okay? It's not, sometimes it's not coming as fast as you want it to, but that's okay. It tells us to maintain faith. It tells us to keep on going the path that we're going because something is working. Something is blooming. Okay? And to have patience because it's not always on your time. It's on the divine time. And when the divine time wants to align with your plans, bam, that's when things happen. So not only is this patience, but it's also giving you a reminder to sometimes we're not doing everything right. Sometimes we are not necessarily on the right path. And this is difficult to discern sometimes. So we want to check in periodically. All right, I've been doing X, Y, and Z for how many months? What results is it giving me? What value am I getting out of this? What am I energetically putting in? And what sort of action am I doing? Can I do more? Or do I need to step back and allow this shit to breathe on its own without like suffocating it? Sometimes you just need to let things breathe on its own. And then inevitably it'll be like, uh -huh, bye. And it'll leave the crop. And it'll start, you know, you'll start amassing all these gold coins without needing to pluck them off of the tree. That was a really weird analogy. But I think you kind of get what I mean. Like, know when to back off and assess and analyze your course of action. And know when it's the right time to actually give more effort if you need to give more effort, right? Also, timing is everything. You might want to check in with an astrologer. When I see this card, it does give me a sense of timing. It does give me a sense of divine timing, right timing. Astrologers can really help you with that. They'll say, okay, the energy is like, ah. You know, and it's time for you to do that and because the end, this is awesome for what you want to create and manifest. The, the air is right for you for success. So sometimes when we don't have it, the intuitive knowledge to know, okay, this is the right time to initiate a project or this is the right time to launch something, we could do it unbeknownst to us in, in, in a, in a, energetic space that's not going to be fertile for our needs it's not really going to support ourselves so we meet a lot of resistance or challenges along the way that doesn't necessarily mean that you're doing anything bad it just may mean that listen if you're really trying and you're trying and you're trying and you are seeing some results right but it's not that quick don't just give up sometimes it's just a matter of time sometimes it's just a matter of patience sometimes it's just a matter of divine timing okay so what you are doing on a conscious note is working out for you again just to reiterate you do want to check back periodically to see what your crops need whatever those crops are don't be so harsh on yourself okay just know that you are responsible you have like it's like a child you're responsible to check up on its growth and see what it needs and see what you need um Okay, so on a subconscious note for Wednesday and Thursday, we're getting the world, and the world opens up a big portal for us. This is something like, this is kind of like, I'm alluding to everything to freaking children in childbirth, and that's not just because I'm pregnant, it's because this really does make sense in those terms. The world is like a big gaping vagina, and like you're coming out of it, and it's like something in you is dying like being single <laughs> is dying <laughs> and you're entering a world where everything is just new to you and you're vulnerable and there's a new portal of, of, of infinite possibilities and new resources at your disposal. And that's the symbology here. We have a naked woman in the center of her universe and she's kind of looking all around because everything is at her disposal. At the same time, everything is new. So, you know, you have a lot of responsibility on deck here in your subconscious realm. You may be just entering this phase of life where you're not limiting yourself anymore. And this sense of anxiety or you needing to make these choices that's birthing a new you and getting you out of old dynamics and old energy patterns and, and entering new ones. It's hard because 
you've only known what you've known your whole life and if you were in a cage and now you're like whoa i just read a book that told me about this whole outside world that i can really go into that could be overwhelming because then you're like okay what do i need to leave behind and how do i do it and when do i do it and what if i get in trouble or what if i do the wrong thing the world is opening up infinite possibilities for you so you're expanding in consciousness, you're expanding in knowledge of self, you're expanding on what's really truly going on around you, what's going on with your friends' dynamics and energy fields, what's going on on a more um, um, macro scale. The world can also mean that, you know, you're attracting really valuable and synchronistic things to you. So synchronistic things and value doesn't necessarily mean positive all the time um it is ultimately a positive thing yeah but it's not like sometimes you're attracting situations that are going to wake you up because you haven't realized that you've been in that particular vibration or you haven't realized that you held that thought or that belief system about yourself. So if you're, you know, attracting narcissists all the time and you're a little bit of a narcissist yourself and you didn't realize it, bam, that's the world card. So the world card's got you really super ripe. It's got you really super magnetic, especially if it's in your subconscious and you're unaware of it. Lots of interesting things will be happening to you. Again, nothing bad, but it does kind of open your eyes to realize of the the power that you truly contain and, and, and how you interact how you interact in the world around you and how do you interact with the world you have inside of yourself. Internally, you might want to be bursting out of the scenes to make yourself known. You might want your influence to be a little bit more widely spread. The world can mean like, okay, I'm ready. I'm ready to break out. I'm ready to like, I'm, I'm tired of this. I've been doing this day in and day out and I've just been waiting on the conscious level. I've been, I've been waiting. I've been analyzing. Maybe I've been analyzing and things are really not working out for me or I've been really thinking about what I've been giving into for these past couple of years and I've had a change of heart and change of interest and the world can be like, yeah, baby girl, maybe it's time for you to quit your accounting job and like open up a dance studio or become a director or something really out of the blue something really pertaining to you it can be it can be very shocking it could be very different um it's not always the case but the world is going to give you opportunity for your spirit to expand for your soul to expand for ways for you to more resonate deeply with yourself so really honor that and know what is dying and what is calling to be birthed from you whether it's actually a physical birth because a lot of people are giving birth at this time or are pregnant um or if it's a med you know a figurative birth you know maybe it's a change of environment or change in lifestyle, or change in your life path. Um, yeah, I mean, when I get the world, also it's always best to to embed yourself with various cultures and philosophies and knowledge and education and makes you a more well-rounded person. The world is very much a fun card, but it's it's definitely the end of something. It's karmically the end of something. So something in inside of you just knows shit's about to pop off. Something's, I'm getting closure somewhere. And it, either many aspects of your life are just one. Just huge transition here that is like pushing you out into the world to become who you authentically are. To lead with authenticity. Even if that means you have to be raw and vulnerable and, and expose yourself now. Um, it's kind of time to create a new armor and a, and a new dynamic that's more um, accurate for the type of individual that you are becoming. Um, create the life you want to live, essentially. So, that being said, we're going into Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Friday being the 26th. Saturday being the 27th and Sunday being the 28th. Spirit, consciously, what's going on for us this weekend? Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. What is it that we need to know? So 
subconsciously what's going on. Okay, these are very tricky to shuffle. They're very tricky to shuffle. But we'll get the hang of it. I'm going to take this one. I pero did I do this one already? This one's been coming out all freaking for the past couple of days when I'm doing my tarot meditations on my social media outlets. It's been coming out all the time. Okay. Hold up. Uh, what am I doing? Okay. Consciously for the weekend. Bazam. We have the five of wands. <laughs> so the five of wands can represent a lot of things. Okay, we're still in this chaotic time where we're birthing things, we're destroying things, we're exploring things, we're doubting things, we're hesitant, we're getting out of stuff, we're finishing stuff. Shit's all over the place. So the Five of Wands does symbolic this sort, um, does symbolize this sort of chaos, this sort of lack of clarity everyone wanting to have their say and not necessarily cooperating for the best benefit of all we have five men with five sticks just beating each other over the head for the top-notch spot five of swords can represent battle competition strife disagreement and this is something on a conscious note that you if you already have it on the conscious note then you five steps ahead because then if you're walking into that situation it's because you wanted to because if you know better, then you'll know how to kind of sway your way, your way around it. Or just like, I don't want to say like, hold back, hold back on your truth. Okay. Don't be petty. But at the same time, like, don't instigate, don't start situations that you know you're better than getting into. Um, you know, just be, you know, really access your higher self. Be super conscious. Be woke. You know, utilize your your wisdom to your best advantage. The five of wands can represent opposition. Especially if you're breaking through and you want to do things your way. And you know you need to do things your way. Could it, it, it could symbolize that the world, it could feel like the world doesn't want you to win. Or it could feel like somebody's opinions are going against yours and, and you have to fight for your right. This can also represent that you don't know what the hell you want to do. It could represent various aspects of your consciousness that want to do different things. And they're all fighting for your attention. And so which one you're going to choose, take action on first. I feel like maybe sometimes you can do them all. It's just a matter of prioritizing what's more important for you at the time. Sometimes it's just a matter of meditating on what's the best course of action instead of letting your mind run wild. Five of Wands can also represent... Ow. Hold on. Oh, baby. Um, five of Wands can also represent... Uh, Gonya, what was I going to say? I just lost my train of thought. That ha happens. Give me a second. It can represent competition with yourself it can represent being very harsh with yourself um not giving yourself enough credit not loosening up and allowing yourself to be just like uh yeah competing with other people judging yourself judging other people um you know it's it's definitely a social card but it can also pertain to the interior um circumstances uh so just bear in mind that Consciously, you might have some strife going on around you this weekend, especially if you want to go and do things your own way um, or an environment that might be toxic that you're conscious of it being toxic. Now, in the subconscious wo world, what you're not aware of is the Six of Pentacles. The Six of Pentacles can be a teacher, a guide, someone here that is helping you out. Someone here that can help, you, maybe giving you good wisdom. Someone around you that's giving you good wisdom or maybe you actually know better and are giving yourself good wisdom about your conscious actions and your conscious actions is just not listening to your higher self. Or you're not listening to um, what you really should be doing. Alternatively, if you're in a rut, 
and you're, you know, you feel very torn and it's not that you're beating yourself up. This is just life and life is like beating you up. This is to tell you what you don't know is that someone is surfacing up for you. Someone is going to offer their help. And mind you, don't limit yourself as to how they can show up in your life. This can represent uh, words of wisdom that you hear from a passing stranger. A phone call with someone you haven't spoken to in a while with a beloved that you have speak, spoken to. Someone that you depend upon very, very heavily. Um, this can represent a book. This can represent a TV show, uh, a, a program, stream of music, something that just lifts you up and gives you clarity and gives you the lesson that you need to carry on to alleviate the situation and stop. Alternatively, it can be you. You already know what you need to do, so stop playing yourself. Stop fighting. Stop causing all this resistance for no reason if you know how to proceed. Alternatively, this can represent that this whole chaotic situation that you're experiencing is going to birth a more savvy, conscious, thought-oriented, intentional person. This can mean that it's leveling you up in some way. You had to come from the bottom to get to the top. And this person has been in this position. That's why he's so benevolent. That's why he knows how to give. He can empathize. He knows. He's like, okay, I made it this far through my own wisdom, through my own experiences, through my own hustle. And now I want you to help yourself. And I'm going to get you started with a little bit of, of this change, whatever this change metaphorically represents. It could be that this, this, this situation in disguise is actually extremely valuable for you to get up off of your ass and enact some change. Alternatively, this can represent that someone you know on a conscious level is going through it. And you have the heart and the information to help out. So if you know you could be of service, step up for the role. Okay, so tarot is not a one-sided coin. It can represent many things in different contexts and under the context of which way, which way we're reading it and the reader, of course. So, that's the, that's the week. I spent a long time reading it, so I'm not going to sum it up for you, but you can rewind the video and watch it. I'm going to break into the Oracle cards. And I'm going to be using the Isis Oracle deck by Alana Fairchild. She has a lot of amazing decks. My homegirl has a Rumi deck. Sufi, a mystic, who is amazing. Rumi, a poet. Um... But this Isis Oracle deck, I have a huge affinity with uh, Kemet, an ancient Egyptian um, education and knowledge and the civilization in and of itself. Uh, so I bought that because it really it just st stood out for me in a meditation class I attended. The practitioner used this at the end and I was like, oh my God, I'm so in love. I didn't know these existed. And they're so profound. So I want everybody to just clear their brain, kind of like envisioning a chalkboard being erased into a blank slate. And take a couple of deep breaths and realign yourself with your spirit as I shuffle the cards. Spirit, what is our message of the week? Oracle message of the week. What can we best benefit from? What can we take home? What message can we take home that we can best grow? benefit from for our highest good okay I have no clue what that is but we'll look into it this one is hold up this one is Temple of Lapis Lazuli, goddess of the ancient skies. So I'm going to read this Bible here for you and show you the card as I'm reading it. Your soul is very ancient, beloved, and does not only herald from the earth. It holds much special wisdom of star peoples from civilizations far and near 
with unique high vibrational awareness that can help humanity transition from a civilization based in fear to a love-based culture. You are guided to come into deeper acceptance of your own inner knowing now. Ancient souls with experience of consciousness and community from more spiritually advanced civilizations are here on this planet to be themselves to the fullest extent possible in order to help support each other and heal human culture so that the planet may thrive. The challenge can be that such ancient souls can feel out of place here on earth for a time as they go through an adjustment process and remember their healing mission on the planet. These souls hold much inner wisdom of star peoples and civilizations far and wide in this galaxy and beyond. This inner vision excuse me, this inner wisdom vibrates at a higher level than the frequencies of fear, aggression, dominance, and disconnection that are a part of the global human wounding they are here to help heal. This is why ancient souls are needed, of course, to help offer a different reality which is a more whole and connected to oneness and love. But the challenge is not to lose belief and honoring of your own inner true wisdom and deep soul truths while becoming a member of a culture that is still so different to yours. This oracle comes to you to provide much needed spiritual recognition that you have wisdom and understanding within you that is very ancient and flows from the soul and that you also have a sacred connection to wisdoms that come from star peoples of Sirius and other celestial beings that serve through unconditional love. This is neither strange nor weird, but it is precious, and although you are not the only one of your kind here, it is far from a common soul type on this planet, mostly because it does take a lot of strength and dedication to be able to sustain existence purposely in a vibration that is lower than your own natural vibration. This oracle comes to you with an offering of guidance. Remember who you are within. Do not try to fit with external models of how to be in this world. For you are here to help birth a new way that is more aligned with spiritual truth. You are guided to trust in your wisdom, to sit and contemplate any issue that you are questioning right now, and to trust in the voice of your heart. Guidance doesn't have to make logical sense though. Often, at a higher level, you will perceive a higher divine logic in the guidance. It just needs to feel as though it makes your heart expand and that will be a sign for you that it is your truth. This is long, but uh, listen. If you are interested in the ritual to heal in the temple of the Laz Lapis Lazuli, I will write it down for you. I will type it down in the comments below or in the in the commentary box or not even the comments. It's in the video description below this video. You can't miss it because it's right down. Okay. So it's going to say the ritual and this is in backwards because probably it's in backwards. The ritual to hear in to heal in the temple of Lapis Lazuli and the invocation to the temple of Lapis Lazuli. If you want to participate in this ritual this week for the new moon that I forgot is on the 25th. I didn't even say anything about that. Pero está bien. New moon energy, new moon reading. You can do this ritual then. You can do this ritual before. This is an amazing, amazing resource. Also, it is the temple of Las, Lap, Lap, Lapis Lazuli. Um, Lapis Lazuli, excuse me, is a phenomenal stone used to channel ancient civilizations open up your third shock um i better don't probably open up your third chakra but uh, your throat chakra is what i was going to say and you can find it in various stores online i mean i don't know where y'all are tuning in from but in new york city you've got namaste bookshop you probably have a lot of distributors i know this is this dope distributor in union square market that's really cool his name is angel he has a table out you can't miss him he's usually there every day weather permits um uh if you are in new orleans there's a gym lapidary 
in the French Quarter. I think it's even called French Quarter Gem Lapidary and Crystal. And they have the cheapest crystals ever. You can get it there. Also, you can get it online. Um, do some research and try to find out in your town where you can buy some lapis lazuli. But it is actually a stone that I need to get. I need to get a ring. I had a dream that I had 12 lapis lazuli rings. And, um, yeah, so I'm going to need to buy that sometime soon. It's definitely worth the investment. And for the last oracle, I'm going to read the moon deck. Spirit, what do we need to know for this week? What's the message? And let me look this up in the book. Worth. I free myself from critical thoughts towards my body and my worth. We are perfect and flawed all at once. To deny this is to deny the experience of being fully alive. Although we all share this truth, we tend to be hardest on ourselves and may have developed a fierce inner critic. This voice has power. Do not vanish it. Instead, teach its voice to be more uplifting and supportive. Notice when negative thoughts sneak in and choose to think differently. As you free yourself from unhealthy thought patterns, tune into what your real needs are. Recognize your desire to be loved and know that you're worthy beyond measure. Like any devoted practice, the retraining of your mental habits craves consistency, showing up for yourself with kindness and compassion. Your inner critic is ready to transform into a more loving and productive voice in your life. Ritual. I'll read this ritual because it's short. The ritual is called Kali Mudra. Okay. This mudra directs energy from the root up to the crown, conducting it like a life antenna. Kali is the goddess of transformation and shows up when it's time to transform into a more honest version of oneself. This exercise also helps dissolve blocks or thought patterns that may be dimming your glow. Stand tall with your feet hip distance apart and parallel. Ground firmly and evenly into your heels and legs, feeling the earth beneath you. Extend your arms straight up and interlace your fingers into a fist above your head. Reach just your pointer fingers upward and keeping your other fingers laced together and your elbows straight. Hold this posture steady for 3 to 11 minutes. Deepen your breath and soften your jaw. Feel yourself simultaneously ground and expand as you clear anything that clouds your connection. Then slowly release and float your arms downward. Bask in the resonance. Okay, my loves, I had so much fun. This was amazing. Thank you, thank you, thank you for tuning in and joining me. I'm so happy to be back. I'm going to be posting this ASAP Rocky and with the ritual at the bottom. Um, if you want an in-person session with me, that will have to be in New Orleans. I am booked out for the next two weeks. So just shoot me. It's best to just shoot me an email if you have a particular time frame in mind, be that a uh, in-person session or not just to see if I have availability and I will let you know um, you can shoot me an email at urbanillumination at gmail.com my website is myurbanillumination.com you want to click on the work with me tab to see my services and price, prices and whatnot and um, if you want to book you can go there you click on what you want to book and then shoot me an email after so I know you have booked and it's for you also if you want to follow my journey in my juju belly the juju baby and baby Simba you can follow me on my social media outlets it is Tatiana Tarot Tatiana T-A-T-I-A N-N-A Tarot is T-A-R-O-T on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, Snapchat, and I don't really use that that much, but I'll be on and off now that I'm not puking. So I love you guys. It's so happy to be back. Bendiciones, besos, and everything in between. Ciao. Till next week. <laughs>